We can't believe that it is the end of June now. It is Canada Day for our American friends. We know that July 4th is your day, but July 1 is Canada Day. And I work in the beautiful city of Toronto. And we're going to be looking into all the things that you need to know for the second half of this year. Six months has gone by and man, has it ever been like a rocket ship news almost every single day and things that we never expected ever to happen has been happening. We're going to be covering what has happened and more importantly, what we expect for the second half of the year. So we're going to be covering Toronto, Toronto homes, detached, semi-detached and condos. We're going to be looking at Hamilton, Mississauga, Vaughan and Scarborough. These are the areas that have been most requested by everybody. If you want me to cover a certain area, please reach out to me and let me know. And I'm going to be covering it whenever I can. All right. So let's jump straight into the stories of today and the numbers that you need to know. So we're going to be looking at each area individually. And then I'm going to be showing you the whole national data that we need to know about. So if we're going to look at all Toronto properties as a whole, all of them, okay, this is condos, townhomes, everything all together. Average price is $1.19, $1.2 million. As you can see, prices have massively recovered in the past year. Absolutely crazy. Okay, but more specifically, let's find out by type. Everybody always wants to know by type. So we're going to first look at condos in Toronto and see what condos are doing. Let's actually zoom out to where everybody wants to know from the peak price where it was last year. We can see that average in the past two years, it peaked at 830 and is currently sitting at 788. So prices have not even gone down in Toronto when it comes to condos. Unbelievable. So this is very, very common. We knew that this would happen because remember that the bigger they are, the harder they fall. So the lower price they are, the more stable they are. All right. So let's take a look at detached properties in Toronto. We could see that it peaked out at 2.1 million last year, currently sitting at 1.9. So more of a drop. So this is detached properties only in Toronto. We also had a request for townhouses in Toronto. So Let's take a look at the type inside of Toronto just for us townhomes. 7,000 townhomes sold in the past. So property prices on townhomes dropped from a peak of 1.2 million. And currently townhomes are selling for just over a million, a million 58,000. This is townhomes right now inside of Toronto. We are seeing some big numbers coming out of Toronto in that the prices have absolutely boomed up. That's a big, big difference. But we have to know, are things selling? And because we don't have a lot on the market, things are selling a lot faster at 15 days on average instead of 30 days on average in Toronto. Also, prices. People are listing their properties low again. All the games, 105% is what people are offering right now, which means that if you sell a home, put it listed for a million dollars, you're going to get $1,050,000 50000 for that property. That's what is the going rate, let's say, right now. All right, so let's dig into a little bit more. We only have a couple more, and then we're going to dig into all the juicy parts that you need to know about what's happening in the next six months. All right, so the first one up, Hamilton was the number one requested city for us to look at. Let's look at prices. That's what everybody always wants to know. Hamilton right now, prices topped out at $1 million. But look at that. It hasn't had a bigger recovery as Toronto, which is also expected. Bottomed out at $781,000 in January. Currently sitting at eight thirty nine. Eight thirty nine dollars is where it's sitting. So if we just go back to last June, we could see it was eight seventy seven. dollars So it hasn't quite recovered. Toronto has recovered. This is what we would expect in this type of instance. No big surprise when we're seeing that, right? Because the farther you are away from transit and outside of the city, the recovery is not going to be as good. Now, let's just jump across here, guys, because I can tell you that this is the exact same. If you are looking in New York right now, or if you're looking in Chicago or Miami or whatever, all the cities over a million are pretty much dealing the same. They're all pretty much the same, the, these things that we're learning. Okay, so that was Hamilton. Now we want to look up Mississauga and check out Mississauga. Now that's a, another big, big area for you guys who don't know Toronto. It's just the west of Toronto. It's a million people 
live there. So if we take a look at Mississauga, this is the average price. So this is all types of products averaged out at 1.2 million a year and a half ago and currently sitting at 1,144,000. Look at that freaking recovery. Unbelievable. From 924,000 up to 1,144. That recovery is unbelievable. A $200,000 jump. If you were sitting in Mississauga and the rates were 3% back here, and now people are getting 8% and the price hasn't changed, my goodness, you should be taking this extra 200,000 and running for the mountains. Unbelievable. I don't know. If you haven't seen a more clear sell signal, you let me know. All right, let's try to take a look at Vaughn right now. When people are willing to pay ridiculously stupid prices for properties, you got to be willing to give it to them. Vaughn right now, 3,000 homes have sold. 3,026 homes have sold in the past 24 months. Let's take a look at the prices in Vaughn. Peak prices were 1.6 million. And if we go out to now, it's now sitting at 1.3. So you see that recovery is not as good. It's still in a sell zone. But man, alive, Mississauga is on fire right now. Crazy. All right, so let's go to the last requested. I only took the top five. And if you guys want me to look up some for the next week's episode, we try to do it on Friday nights now. We're going to look up at Scarborough. And then you guys let me know for next week what you guys want me to pull off. Plus, I'm going to have a question and answer period at the end for you guys. Why can I not find Scarborough, you guys? Can't find Scarborough. Am I too slow? I think so. Or I'm not rating. All right. We'll have to do it next time, you guys. So that was the last one I wanted to show you. Now, let's move on then. And I'm going to show you some of the stuff that you need to know moving forward right now. These are the important facts. So... If you guys want me to look up certain areas, I will have a question period after. In Toronto, we're always compared to Vancouver, always. The prices are always higher in Vancouver. Look at that. Going back to 2006 and moving on, Vancouver's always the more expensive city. But why is that? Ever since England handed Hong Kong back to China, all the money flowed from Hong Kong into Vancouver, which from like 99 pushed property prices up in Vancouver and they always beat Toronto until recently. Now Toronto prices are tying Vancouver prices because Toronto had a much bigger swing to the upside, as you can see, right through 2021. It took off like a rocket where Vancouver didn't, and now they're about dead even. Vancouver prices 1.18 and Toronto prices 1.16. $20,000 difference over property prices in those two zones. They're tied right now. So everybody is celebrating this little tail that you can see over in this area right here. This up that they're seeing. This is what they're celebrating, but no one is looking at the big picture. Let's try just to take for a second and add in a city that many of you might know. Let's try to pull in, let's try to pull maybe, I want to pull some cities that you guys might know. Try let's Pull up Montreal, maybe we'll pull up Calgary, just as a comparison so we have something to compare it to. Toronto and Vancouver are these two big ones, the yellow and the red. But if we look at Montreal and Calgary down here, we can see that their prices are much more stable. All the way back since 2006, we see the differences in those prices. So Calgary has gone up a little bit. Montreal has doubled. But when we're looking here over the past 20 years, the difference of Toronto and Vancouver have been absolutely crazy. So they've gone absolutely to the moon, right? So when we're going to take a look at this, is there some things that you have to know? In my opinion, this is need to know. Why are prices high right now? There's a lot of people, cash buyers, buying properties. If you take a look at this black line, this is the 10-year moving average. So this is the average of homes that are selling. So you know what? As we're going through 2012, 2013, bouncing up and down, that's okay. We saw that bulge in 2016, 2017. This happened a lot in Toronto and Vancouver. Uh, specifically Toronto, though, is what move this up. As we know what happened in 2020, it shot it down. 21 and 22 were banner years of buying properties. But where we are right now, if you take a look at this, the low that we hit, that low hasn't been hit since 2009, the low then. So supply is not really there, but it's not necessarily just supply. It's the fact that people cannot buy homes. They cannot qualify at their mortgage brokers. Also, if you take a look at the percentage year over year. So we started collecting data for this back in 2006, back here. And in 2006, you can see that the percentage change, it was going up 10% per year. Of course, 09, we all know what happened in the great financial crisis when the prices actually came down. It was high for a long, long time. Obviously, 2020 and 2021 were banner years. Look at that 30% change. Can you see that 30% over here? 
30% change in prices year over year. Crazy. But look at where we are now. It hit as low as minus 15. And we haven't seen that. We've never seen that since we started taking records on this almost 20 years ago. So this is important for us to pay attention to. And remember what I just said right now is that the first chart, it's not just that there's no supply of homes. This is just the homes that have sold. It's not just supply of homes. It's also coming back to people cannot get loans. All right, so why can't we get loans? I have a lot of videos on my other channel about that. But if we take a look at what's been happening to the rates, so just go to the five-year bond, which is attached to the five-year fixed rate mortgage. If we take a look at that, you guys, we can see that the rate is very high. When the rate is high, it means that home prices have to get down. So when we're going to take a look at the prices in Toronto, for example, let's just take a look at the prices again and take a look at the chart. When we see what happened this year in January, we see prices actually skyrocketed through this year. So when you look at the mortgage rates, you can see that as the year changed, we had this big low of rates here. And then we had this big pocket of low rates here for two months. That is responsible. Low rates in those two zones were responsible for the price hike that you saw here. So now when you see that the rates have actually risen up, let's take a look at that angle. If it sustains that high, you're going to see those home prices. Let's go back. Those home prices will get crushed downward. And so when we're looking at the United States, the United States are our biggest trading partner. So if they're our largest trading partner and we are at in Canada, at a 4.75% right now, and the United States is sitting at five and a quarter, we have half a percent to catch up to them. This is a big problem. Canada has to raise their rates to catch up to the United States. We look quite stupid that we paused the rates twice. Now we have egg on our face because we thought we could do it our own way. Remember, two pauses on March 8th and April 12th, and that is what's causing the problems right now. So we're going to have to catch up those two extra rates to get to five and a quarter just to see what that happens. Now, the states is talking about raising the rates to 5.6%, and Canada would have to do that if we weren't going to face some trouble. So when we're looking at the fixed rate and variable rate right now, you know, through all of time, the fixed rate, I always call it a security blanket. You have to pay for that security. And so as this security blanket was there, but look at what happened in October of 2022. They merged and now they inverted. Now we're in this weird world where up is down and down is up, where the fixed rate mortgage is actually cheaper than the variable rate mortgage. Good Lord, that's unbelievable. And for quite a while here, it was different by 1%. Look at that, 1% different. But ever since the Bank of Canada just raised their rates, you can see right there all of these steps in blue. And they have been closing that gap a lot now. So now the difference is only 0.7. So it's still inverted but it's still not where it should be. Whenever you see the fixed rate below the variable weight, you should know that something very dodgy and dangerous in the market is happening. And so this is where the problem is lying. Right now, a million dollar mortgage last year at 2% for 25 years was a $4,200 payment. Today, you would need a $600,000 mortgage with the new rates to equal a $4,200 payment, which would, people's salaries are not going up which would say that it should force prices down by 40% to compare to that, not accounting for inflation. All right, so if you had a million dollar mortgage last year and a million dollar mortgage this year, and we add in the 2% from last year and 7% now, same, what would the payments be different from $4,200 and it would skyrocket all the way up to $7,000, $3,000 a month, and people can't afford that. So the number one question that I always get is, how on earth are people affording this? It doesn't make any sense. I can't afford it. I'm getting a second job, a third job. Everyone in my house is cutting back. We can't afford it. And the answer is very tricky and dangerous. So you see the payment went from 4,200 to 7,000. You can get this at any mortgage calculator you want online. It's free. Mortgagecalculator.org is where I am right now. Please feel free to go and look at it. So this is what's happening. This is the article that came out this week. 60, 70, 90 year mortgages as Canadians are struggling with these rates. So how does that work? If you just go, I just typed in BMO and look that up. They're going to say, okay. 
So do you see in this example here at a 4% mortgage, you have all of the black is principal and the blue is interest and your total is $2,100. I mean, laughable, first of all, right? Who has a $2,100 payment? But if your interest rate goes up to five and a half, the payment still stays at 2,100. It has not changed, but now the amount of principal got drastically reduced. Now your payment is almost all interest. Well, David, the rates are higher than 5.5 right now. Okay, let's move on. So then this comes to what they call a trigger rate. So at 4%, I'm paying a lot of principal, still the same payment at 2100. At 5.5%, I'm only paying a little bit of principal. But what happens now if the interest rate goes up to 6.9 like it is right now? Well, then your entire payment becomes principal, not just your entire payment. Notice this line at the top, just the interest portion is even greater than your total payment. So you're not even paying the interest. So what do the banks do? Well, you can go take a look at the Bank of Canada, what they allow. They know the number of people that are on this trajectory. They know that only these people here before this line are the people who have hit their trigger rates so far where they can't even afford the interest on their mortgage. And we have all of these people that are coming due as well. This is on uh, Canadian mortgage trends. You can go take a look at it. So if we go to the Bank of Canada's website, they try to explain it to you quite easily. So you have one portion in yellow, which is principal and the interest on the bottom, which is in blue. So as the interest raises, raises, raises and goes above, notice what they start doing in the yellow squares right there. They start adding the amount of money that you're missing to your total and making the mortgage go longer and longer into your future. That right there is the danger. And this is what they're talking right now where we're seeing 60, 70, 90 year mortgages. We have one client that called me, my hand of God, 101 years on their mortgage, 101. Just try to fathom that. You couldn't pay it off. Your kids couldn't pay it off. Your grandkids would have to pay off the house. If you have something like that, you need to sell your property. You need to get out before you're smooshed like a cockroach, like Mr. Wonderful always says. He says you're going to get smashed by these giant banks. So let's move on. This is what's going to happen. They keep stacking that principle to the end of your mortgage. And there is coming your danger. So how many people have this? Well, they're saying right now, fixed rate mortgages, they're up to 79% of people, but we also know that the number of people who have hit their trigger rate, according to the mortgage trends, the number of people that have hit it, eight out of 10 people were only two thirds through. Only these people have hit it so far. There's a whole bunch more people who haven't hit it. And so you're gonna ask me, well, David, I thought that this was illegal. I thought that you weren't allowed to actually do that. 25 year mortgage is the maximum that the governments allow you. And guess what? I tell you, you're freaking right. That is the law. So let's try to jump into that a little bit more and dig into what does that actually mean? So in 2020, we're going to play this game here. In 2020, let's say that you had your loan originated in 2020. Loan originated. I'm starting that. I just got a mortgage. I just bought my new house. I'm so proud of it. The governments only allow you to do a 25-year mortgage. Not like the United States. That's 30 years. But guess what? In Canada, we used to have a 40-year mortgage. Dun, 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 like Darth Vader. And when 2007, 8, 9 happened, they said 40 year mortgages are evil. It's the reason for the crash. So they got rid of it. And guess what? In the United States, they got rid of it as well. Not allowed. 25 year maximum. Do you hear me? Got it, sir. And the law says that when you get your loan originated, it can only be 25 year maximum. Now let's fast forward that till 2025. Let's just say you could choose to lock it in for one, two, three, four, five years, whatever you want. For those of you in America, they have 30 year fixed mortgages. We're not allowed that here. So say in 2025, it comes time to renew, we call it or renegotiate your mortgage. When you renegotiate your mortgage, what does the law say? maximum 25 years. But guys, there is a lot of time between 2020 all the way to 2025, right? So this is what happens. If your mortgage rate went from in 2020, let's just use a number, $3,000. And currently where we're sitting today, it's sitting at $5,000. And you say, I can't afford that. I can only afford three grand. What they do is add $2,000 to the total at the end. So 
you can the bank will let you continue at three thousand dollars even though your mortgage payment should be five six seven thousand dollars but here comes the danger so we know already yes there's a lot of people on 70 80 90 year mortgages right now but they're sitting in this gray zone that i'm talking to you about but then once you get to this 2025 wall think of this like a train running into a brick wall like it's going to crash. You don't have a negotiating tool available anymore. The government is very, very clear that temporary Band-Aid is no longer available to you. When you come up to 2025 or the renewed date on your mortgage, it has to snap back to reality. I'm quoting Eminem here, 25-year maximum. So not only would you have to go from a $3,000 payment and shoot it up to a $5,000 payment, not just that. Now you've actually added all the interest on the interest that you avoided and your mortgage is actually going up. At this point in 2023, you might have a million dollar mortgage, but by the time you renew in 2021, you've missed so much that now guess what? You might be at 1.1 million. Your mortgage is going up. This is kind of some dangerous stuff. Now the governments are allowing this stuff very, very temporarily, might I add, so that you can get your affairs in order. So the governments have been quite clear in telling us that this is coming and we are allowing it to happen temporarily, temporarily, so you can get your affairs in order. So are you getting your affairs in order? The government is very, very clear and they have been asked this at several, several, several meetings. And they're asked direct questions. Will you cut rates? And they say, absolutely not. First of all, I don't believe that. Because what would they say? Just play the devil's advocate on the other side. If they said we're cutting rates in September, everything would grind to a halt and there would be a tsunami. What's bigger than a tsunami? Like the biggest wave on earth, okay, of money flooding into homes and it would cause inflation like crazy. So they're never going to say that ever. So I know that that's out of the case. So will they cut rates? I, that's a give -o, gimme. But they mentioned specifically, will you bring back 35-year and 40-year mortgages? And they said, no, absolutely not. That's part of the problem, okay? They said, will you allow longer mortgages? No. Will you allow people for their negative amortization to continue? And they said, this is a Band-Aid, a temporary relief for you to get your affairs in order. That's a direct quote. So this is what we have to do. If you are not getting your affairs in order, I think that you're in for a big surprise. I think you're gonna be in danger. Who are the people that are going to be in trouble? Remember, the bigger the price, the bigger that you're going to get hurt. That's the short and sweet answer. So let's jump back and take a look. I had this example up for you guys before. We are looking at Toronto and Vancouver, prices of 1.2 million. We're also looking down here at Calgary and Montreal. Okay, so what did the property prices drop in? Okay, we're in Calgary. 520, it peaked out at last, last spring and currently sitting at 540. The property prices went up. Okay. But if you're looking in greater Toronto, property prices went down from 1.3 on average and went down to just under 1.1. So they lost 200, a quarter million dollars. So losing a quarter million dollars is a bankruptcy event for a lot of people, whereas Calgary went up. So my point is, is not all cities are made the same. So when people keep asking, is it a good time to get into real estate? Well, that depends. It depends where you are, what city you are, and what product type that you're looking at. And I get it. I really do get it. Everybody wants a quick, easy answer. Is it a good time? Is it a bad time? But if I could tell you guys, just simply put, that's like saying, is medicine good for you? Yeah, medicine can save your life. You know, it, it's very, very important. But you wouldn't just like pick up a random pill on the ground and go toss that pill in your mouth. You would never do that. And yes, the right type of medicine is good. It's the same as for real estate. I'm saying that just don't go buy a strip mall in the middle of Toronto and say, wow, David said real estate is good. It's the right type. So every city is different. And if you're looking at multiplexes, commercial property, office buildings, big McMansions, tiny little houses, mobile homes. It doesn't really matter, right? The product means everything. All right, you guys, that's what I wanted to show you for today. Now, guys, I have a channel called Rough Team Realty. As you guys know, Rough Team Realty, we're going to be talking more about macro. I'm also opening another channel, which you guys can follow. I'll put it all the links in all my description that is going to be specifically for Toronto people because I have so many Toronto people that are asking me stuff. If you guys know I am a realtor, I work in Toronto. I'm the broker 
and we sell all over the GTA. So if you're looking to sell in Toronto, please go to sellhire.ca, sellhire.ca, and you can book an appointment with our team. This is what we do is we specialize in selling properties in Toronto. We sell properties for more money, faster and less hassle than our competition. So please reach out there. It's free. doesn't cost you anything. If you want to ever reach out to me, if you have any questions, just go to contact at Rough Team Realty, contact at Rough Team Realty, go up there and send me a message. You just go to the websites and reach out. We're happy to talk to you anytime. Hopefully we can help something happen for you. We want you to make a lot more money. The next two years is going to dictate the next 20 years of your life. And hopefully you're going to be safe. Have a great night, everyone. Have a great weekend. Happy Canada Day. And the biggest gift of all for being Canadian and January 1st is Justin Trudeau is going to screw us and give us a gas tax of an extra 14 cents a liter. <laughs> My God, we're living in clown town these days, you guys. But anyway, keep up the strong fight. If we cannot make enough money to outrun inflation, we're going to be screwed. <laughs> I want you guys all to be safe. So I hope that you have a fantastic night. Thanks so much. I look forward to your comments. Please like the video. Please follow me on YouTube and both of my channels. And I'll talk to you soon.